When I first heard that approximate match was a type of lookup that you can do with VLOOKUP, I assumed that that was actually referring to text. So matching something like Bill with Billy or Jacqueline with Jackie, that's what it was referring to. But actually it refers generally to numbers. For example, what score did these people get? Uh, what grade did they get? If they got a 72, it's between these two. So they would have gotten a B, etc., etc. Um, and we're also going to look at dates. So how to do something with dates and some other kind of more advanced issues like what if there is a date that is before the start time like this one and what are we going to do about the sort order? Can, can we manage that? So we're going to look at how to do all of these within Power Query. My name is David Van Eyam and I have loads of videos that I publish about Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Planner, Google Sheets. Please feel free to check out the rest of my videos and subscribe to my channel if you want always updated ones. So um, we're going to work with these in Power Query. So here I want to work out what grade each of these people got. So Polly, for example, scored 72 and that falls within this range. So she would have gotten a B uh, and etc. etc. This person got 46 and that's a fail. And you can do that with a VLOOKUP by first referencing the lookup value pressing a comma, referencing the table array, which in this case is these two columns, and then saying it's the second column we want returned, and finally using one or true for the range lookup, which would return an approximate match. Even though approximate match is a lot less common than exact match, it is the default. So if you leave that blank, it will still work. The other thing that I used to think approximate match did before I actually learned what it does is match a text value to another text value. So here, for example, I've got Bill that I want to match to Billy. I've got Dexter, I want to match to Mr. Dexter. And sometimes it doesn't work and it gives me this error like Jacqueline and Jackie over here. So if it's not exact character for character, it doesn't work. In fact, even having a space will also break the link and that's difficult to see. So we're going to look at how Power Query can deal with this. So we're going to look at how to get data into Power Query. Uh, to do that, we're going to select this data and then we're going to go to the data tab and choose from table or range. It asks us to make the data into a table, press okay. Often I would do this before, um, do it manually myself so it doesn't come up with this ugly name, but we're going to close and load. We don't need that right away. Uh, because of my settings, it's only doing a connection. I'll show you how to do that. This is already a table, so I can do the same data from table or range. And now I've loaded up these two tables. You can see they're both showing here. I get an error because that's populated from the NA error there. So in any case, I don't need these extra columns. In fact, I'm just going to remove the rest. So select these and remove other columns. And then I'm going to uh, grab the data from the other one. Now, this is a little bit unintuitive because you might think a VLOOKUP is like merge queries and so you're gonna use this, but actually it's not at all. It's gonna use another variant called append queries. So first let me rename this. So this is the grade table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on here and go to append queries. I like to do this as new so it's a separate table. And I'm just going to do that one with the grade table, press OK. And what it does is it actually looks up a common column which has the same name and stacks it on top of each other. If it can't find something with the same name, it creates a new column. So that all the data from the both tables get stacked on top of each other for this final part. Now what I can do though, is I can go here and I can sort it from bottom to top. And in the grade column, I can simply go to transform and fill down like that. And now we can see what they are. And for my last step to make sure that I am getting rid of the ones that were just the placeholders, I can go here and I can remove empty and load them like that. And now I have the score, the grade of every person. Uh, I can give this table a name. So scored table and I can click to close and load. 
So over here we have some dates and we just have one date column. So I actually can't use the last trick that I used in the last time. Plus the dates are in non-sequential order. And the other challenge is I have this date in September 2018 as the start ideation. But I have some dates like this one, which are before that ever started. So I'm going to load up these three tables. The way to make sure that they don't all load, go to File, Options and Settings, Query Options. And the one that I like to use is Data Load, Specify Custom Default Load Settings and untick both of them. And Fast Data Load as well. So let's say now that I want to map my dates with my business phases. So over here, I'm not going to be able to just merge them because I only have one column and I won't know which ones to get rid of. So actually, I'm going to first go to add column and an index column. So this just numbers it from sequentially starting at zero for the first row. Next, I'm going to do the append. I can do this in place. So append queries in place. And I'm going to just append this table with another table for biz phases. You could choose more tables if you like. And then it doesn't match them because start date and dates are not the same thing. But as long as I go back to biz phases, I change this to be a date. If I go here, it now has worked. So I do need to have exactly the same names of the column because that's how Power Query identifies whether they are or are not the same thing. So I can do the same thing. I can go here and I can sort ascending and then I can go here and I can choose transform fill down. Uh, but then I've left with these blanks because of course I have this happening over here. And I can, if I want to just replace them. So I would often click on a value like this. And if I know that it's always at the beginning, which it's likely to be because I used fill down, I can right click and replace values and replace null with maybe pre start or something like that. Now there will never be anything that's not at the beginning if I do it that way. Note that if you had your dates in the other way, you could choose fill up as opposed to fill down. And now we can also get rid of these null values because we added the index column. So just like before, I can choose remove empty. And finally, if I want to go back to the original sort order of my dates before I imported them, I can go here and I can choose to sort. There we go. And now this is the data that is going to load. Uh, I also loaded scores just to indicate that the same process can be done with numbers if you have only one column and or if you want to keep the sort order, the index column is useful for that. So now I want to bring in this table into Power Query to grab the names and the gender. Little tip for you, you can actually hide everything on this thing and unhide it by pressing Control Shift F1 to hide unhide. Um, and then we're going to make this into a table first before we bring it in. To do that, we're going to go to the Home tab and go to Format as Table. But another tip for you, if you right click on one of these that you like, choose Apply and Clear Formatting, it will ask you to make a table, press OK. But it will also remove those borders, the bold, etc., etc. Um, once you have your data in a table, I would give it a name. So go to the table name in the table design tab and choose here the person table. Then we're going to click on it, go to data from table or range. It will load it up into the Power Query editor. I love that this opens up a whole new screen with four tabs that are not even the regular Excel anymore. So now we're going to go to the scored table, the one that we already matched. And we're going to choose to merge queries as new. Then I'm going to match the scored table with the person table that we just brought in. Select the column. And it's matched 10 out of 18 rows. We're going to actually choose a full outer because this will show us the ones that are in table one, but not two. And also the ones that are in table two, but not one. So we can see how we can match them. I'll come back to fuzzy matching later on. So here, this is the combined one, and I'm going to just select this as person. I'm going to use the other one. So table person table dot person. 
the ones it can match and the ones it cannot match. So I'm going to actually select these two columns and remove duplicates for both of those. Uh, now I want to match these two. So as we can see, we've got Billy and Bill. It's not great, uh, but we want to see how we can get that working. So I can go back to the source here, which is the merge query step. And I can actually say that I want to use fuzzy matching. Fuzzy matching immediately matches 14 out of 18 rows from the first table and seven of nine from the second table. So if I do that and then I go to expand and remove duplicates, I can see now that there are fewer ones that are not matching. In fact, it's basically just Jacqueline with Jackie, Dexter with Mr. Dexter, the ones that are a little bit harder, but it has matched Bill with Billy and it has also matched John with John with a slightly different spelling name there. Uh, so we can do extra things to try and match these. So for example, if I go back here, I can say that I want to go to fuzzy matching options and I want to then change the similarity threshold. So the default is 0 0.8, but if I go actually lower like 0 0.6, it's now still the same one. If I go 0 0.4, for example, it's matched more. Well, that is quite low. Five also matches them. So if I do that and remove duplicates, I can see that it has now matched Dexter with Mixta Dexter, but still not Jackie and Jacqueline. In fact, if I go down to, for example, 0 0.1, it's still not matched that same one. So the other option you can do is use something called a transformation table. So let me bring that in. So go back here. And this is a transformation table, effectively saying that Dexter and Mr. Dexter are the same. Now I can also add in Jackie and Jacqueline. So you can see it's just pretty much the same one. And I can select this table and go to from table or range. And then I can use the transformation here. So here, if I go to source, I edit it. I can go to fuzzy, mat the op op fuzzy matching options and you have maximum number of matches and transformation table and the transformation table is the alias table. So it's not able to determine, but let's see what it yields. Press OK. That is because the alias table needs to have columns called from and to. It's very, very descriptive. Do that, rename it, and then it does bring us here. And as you can see here, it does match Dexter to Mixter Dexter, Jacqueline to Jackie, and actually it's still using John to John because that was not in the other one. So just to reiterate, if I undo the matching options, I go back to, for example, 0.8, it does still match all of them because it uses that transformation table. So there's other parts to fuzzy matching and I have a longer video where I go through it. Things like ignoring case, uh, match by combining text parts and maximum number of cases. If you like this video, then I have plenty more like it where I cover Power BI, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, PowerPoint, Planner, Sway, all these kind of great office tools. Click the subscribe button for more data.